Hi kids, it's Mrs. Frable. How are you? Good. I'm, I hope you're okay. I'm fine, thanks. Uh, today we're going to finish up talking about crustaceans. Well, not finish up. We're going to expand talking about crustaceans. Uh, this is Crustacea Day 2. We're going to talk about all of the groups within the subphylum Crustacea. We're going to talk about the taxonomy. Um, you should have already done these starter questions that were on Canvas. So if you haven't done them, pause me, go do them, and come back. I'll wait. Okay, welcome back. Um, and here are the answers that you should have gotten for those starter questions. Uh, what are the general characteristics of the phylum Arthropoda? Because remember, we're talking about a very large, very diverse group of animals in the phylum Arthropoda. And we've already talked about subphylum Chelicerata. Remember those guys? Mrs. Fravel's least favorite group of animals. Um, so now we're talking about the second subphylum, Crustacea. But all arthropods, spiders, ooh, scorpions, mm, and all of the crabby crustaceans I'm going to talk about today, plus the next group we'll talk about, which is Uniramia or insects, all have those arthropod characteristics of exoskeleton, that is reinforced with chitin. They have bilateral symmetry, they have jointed appendages, and that's the important part, is that exoskeleton and those jointed appendages that can become almost any tool this animal needs. Uh, they also have a segmented body with three basic regions. So they have a head, thorax, abdomen. All of them have those three basic regions, and each region is segmented, so it can have different appendages on it. Okay, so then when we narrow down into the subphylum Crustacea, what are their defining characteristics? What's the important things that, that make them different from other arthropods? Is the Biramis appendages that be, can become anything, anything that nature and evolution and the ecosystem need it to be. Uh, their body rate regions are compressed into two distinct regions, the cephalothorax, which is like their eyes are stuck to their thorax uh, with antennae as well, and they have an abdomen, cephalothorax and abdomen, um, and their cephalothorax very often is reinforced into a carapace, which is like a shell that covers their um, their head and thorax or cephalothorax. Okay, why are biramis appendages so special? Why does why does Mrs. Frable nerd out about them so hard? Because they can become anything, right? I showed you the video last time of my crab with the little crab with the fan hands. I don't know why they just biramis that biramis template where it's a it's a segmented appendage and that that then branches and can branch again into more segments on it, just can become anything. Claws, um, deep, see, they can become claws, they can become tiny pinchers uh, like these, okay? Um, they can become paddles, they can become fan hands. They're, they're amazing. And we're gonna look a little bit more closely at how they manifest in this subphylum today, okay? A couple of quick, quick notes for class. Um, make sure you turned in your Arthropoda Crustacea reading worksheets. Again, that reviewed arthropods and also talked about crustaceans. And then also, um, Corner Canyon students, please pay your class fee. It's $20, so you can pay it on Skyward or in the front office. Thank you, COVID. We can't do our field trips to the aquarium, the aviary, and the zoo, and I'm sorry about that. I'm trying to make it up to you, uh, and and that fee covers all of the um, lab supplies that that we've used and that we will use, including I'm gonna I'm gonna hatch us some class crustaceans over Christmas break. Okay, all right, or I should have. I did. You should be watching this after Christmas break, so I'll show you. Okay. Subphylum Crustacea, again, there are five classes within it. We're just going to talk about three, Brinchiopoda, Maxillopoda, and Malacostraca. If you didn't write those down right now, don't worry about it, but do make sure that you are taking notes during this presentation. So if you need to go open a Google Doc or get a piece of paper and a pencil, I'll wait. You can put me on pause. I'll wait. Come back. Are you back? Okay, great. So this is the um, phylogenetic tree for this group. And um, 
they there's there's again always argument in biology and taxonomy um but this is a very diverse group of animals so um they they come in many different forms and are closely related to insects okay all right let's talk about the first class maxillopoda these are weird um they include barnacles and copepods so what is that. So barnacles are arthropods that are sessile. Um, they don't move. Uh, they don't run around once they become adults. And I'll talk about them. I'll show you more in a minute. Uh, characteristics include they have a shortened body and they have no appendages on their abdomen. Um, they just have them on their thorax and then they do have antennae as well. Um, they are small for the most part. There are some rather large-ish barnacles, but we're talking like a few, um, a few inches. Uh, so that that's pretty much it. And these guys are mostly marine. Um, as far as I know, I don't, they're freshwater copepods. There is one species of freshwater barnacle. I have one on a snail in a freshwater tank. They're pretty cool. Uh, but most of them are marine. They live in the ocean. Okay. Um, let me go back. Sorry. So copepods are little free-swimming maxillopods. Uh, they are planktonic and very important in the ocean. Um, mostly, they're almost microscopic. You can't see them very well with the naked eye. Uh, barnacles, again, are weird, super weird. They attach to rocks and then their bodies sit down inside of a shell. Um, these are gooseneck barnacles that I saw in California that are pretty long. Their little butts stick way far out and they've got this hinged door. Okay, So let's talk more about these weirdos. I love them. I don't know why I like weird animals, but I do. Um, when you start looking at them, they're really fancy and fabulous. Uh, barnacles have specialized appendages. They have really long legs that have their um, birimous appendages that form into a fan called cirri with many joints. Okay, kind of like the crab I showed you, but these are on their back end. Uh, they, they. Their body is retained within this external calcified shell that they excrete. Um, and they, they don't look anything like any other arthropod. They don't have that head, thorax, or cephalothorax and abdomen. They are a, a lump of weirdness with a fan on its butt. And it sticks those legs out through a little trap door on the, on the top side of its shell. Its head is glued down to a rock, and um, they they use those little fan legs, those little cirri to filter feed and trap de detritus and whatever else will stick to it. Okay, so if you cut one in in the half, this is what you'll see inside. So they do have a little tiny eye, um, but not like other arthropod eyes. They don't have that hexa hexanoptic hexanoptic vision. They just kind of see light and dark. Um, they have. Uh, oof, they have all of their reproductive organs. Um, they have a mantle cavity. I'm not sure what that's for, where their little body sits down in. Um, and uh, they're just, they pretty much just eat. Eat and reproduce. But they do it in a really pretty way. So this video is one that I took actually during a lab on oysters. This oyster is covered with barnacles, and that's the thing. Barnacles will attach to anything. When they are larvae, when they are noplii, um, they they are free swimming, and um, as soon as they bump into any solid surface, be it a rock or a, uh, a shell of another animal, another barnacle, a boat, it doesn't matter. They're going to stick to it, and this is what they end up doing. They build these colonies of animals that stick to each other and um, stick to rocks. These are gooseneck. Gooseneck? I think barnacles. Um, yeah. Okay. So each one of these was a separate animal. These guys, uh, when their larvae are ready to not be larvae anymore, when they're ready to molt into their um, post-larval stage, they they run into a surface and they stick, they cement their head to the rock, to the surface, and then they build their shell around them um, and then stick their legs out and, and shut their door and they never move again. Okay? So this is a video of live barnacles feeding and you can see their little cirri coming out. And if, I mean, it's kind of creepy, but it's kind of peaceful. They just 
sit there munching, and the oyster goes about being oysters with no care for what's on it. Okay, one more time. Okay, so the little structures that look like a tongue coming out of a mouth, that's actually the cirri legs coming out of their trap door. Okay, very cool. I like them. Okay. Any questions about weirdos? Okay, so then let's talk about the next class. So that was Maxillopoda. Let's talk about Brinchiopoda. Uh, these guys are, uh, we have local, we have local Brinchiopods. So in the Great Salt Lake, which is a very famous weird ecosystem that is fascinating and beautiful. Um, there are uh, world famous brine shrimp. They are brachiopods and uh, they look like this. You're going to do a whole thing on them next time. Um, their main characteristic for brachiopods, they are, a, they are a crustacean whose thorax and abdomen are fused together. So um, they're, they're like just one big piece of body, like cephalothorax abdomen all together. Um, and again, they don't have, um, they don't have appendages on their abdomen. Um, their appendages are leaf-like. They are little, they're little swimmers. So they're little floaty leaf-like appendages and their legs are both for respiration and locomotion. So those little leafy legs have gills on them and they are predators. They're also filter feeders. They are all tiny. Um, again, tadpole shrimp and um, brine shrimp. We have those here in Utah. I am currently growing us some tadpole shrimp to look at in the classroom and we'll be playing with those in class. Okay? There's a video right there. I will link it under this one. Take notes from it. Okay. Oh no, I accidentally clicked it. There we go. Okay. I won't make you watch it right now. Any question about those? That's pretty simple, right? And then the last class is Malacostraca. Ooh, these are the delicious crustaceans. These are the largest and most diverse group of crustaceans and the ones that, that we're all the most familiar with, right? Um, they, there's 20, 20,000 different species, four, three subclasses, 14 orders, many suborders. They're, they're, everything turns into a crab. Have you guys been hearing that's like a big thing in science news right now? If you're, if you're the kind of nerd that, I don't know, Insta, follows Instagram scientists. Um, I'll talk about carcinerization next time. Um, this group includes all the crabs, shrimp, lobsters, and isopods. Oh, one of my favorite students gave me this stuffed isopod years ago. Hey, you know what's cool? What is this? This is life size. This is a model of a deep sea isopod. Okay, what does it look like? What animal does it look like that you're familiar with? Yeah, that's right. Roly polies or pill bugs that you probably play with in your yard. Those are land crustaceans. Uh, they are also called wood lice. Okay, um, so let's talk a little bit more about these guys. So uh, these are a really, again, very diverse group, and they have learned how to use those Biramis appendage templates to perfection. Okay? So they have a head with five fused segments. So they have five segments just on their head. Their thorax has eight segments in it, and those two are fused together into their cephalothorax. So um, that's 13 segments in that region. And then their abdomen has six segments, and that's separate. So every segment on their body, so that's 13 plus 6, that's 19. They can have 19 to 20 pairs of appendages because every segment can have a pair of appendages. Okay? So they have, this is like a default uh, default body for a um, Malacostracan. This looks like a crayfish, maybe a lobster. So they are all based on this basic form and then evolution turns them into what it needs. So they have all of these possible appendages. They do have antennae. Some of them have two pairs of antennae. Um, they have a cephalothorax, abdomen, um, and then they'll have a telson on the end as well. That contains their anus. And those Biramis appendages that Fravel is in love with. I don't know why. I don't know why. Okay. Those, so that's their basic appendages. And again, we get this amazing diversity in appendages. Those Biramis appendages can get all sorts of crazy flappers and flippers and fans and, and pokies and pinchers and claws. This is a crab that I ate. I'm a teacher. I keep dead things 
especially if I've eaten them. So uh, I have all kinds of things. Okay. Okay. Uh, this is, I want to say it's a mitten crab. He's they're they're fairly large and they've got these big fans on their maxillae and mandibles um, to to filter feed and then they've also got those big whoops big claws and let me get out of the way of this so lobsters again these animals are sexually dimorphic that means the the males and females are different um, and you can tell when you flip them over because a female her little swimmerettes which are the little appendages that go flip, 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 along their abdomen if you've ever eaten a lobster and you've had to pull off all those legs to get to the delicious tail meat those are their swimmerettes and the females um, the top set are soft um, and translucent and they cross like this and the males um, their their swimmerettes are are more stiff and the females use theirs to hold their eggs they hold their little eggs and they run around until they hatch okay. so I mean I don't know so they have little swimmerettes hanging off of their abdomen and then they also have walking legs and then their tail is a uh, covered or generally if they have a long tail if they're an open water animal they'll have this tail called a uropod that has flippers on it okay so appendages that are flattened out again just really diverse cool cool group and with crabs uh their their abdomen is um kind of folded up under their body it's shortened folded under so they are mostly cephalothorax and 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 those legs those wonderful legs. Okay. Um, couple, we're going to go through the orders. Here we go with some taxonomy. Where am I going? I'll go down here. So order Isopoda. So again, we are in the class Malacostraca, which is in the subphylum Crustacea, which is in the phylum Arthropoda. This is order Isopoda. We're going deep, you guys. Okay, so isopods um, are these guys. Okay, so they include pill bugs, the land ones, um, marine and freshwater forms. They're everywhere. They're really a successful group and they all have this rigid, segmented exoskeleton so they can, you know, ball up. They're really flexible. Didn't we all think that that's hilarious when you hold a pill bug and they roll up? They have two pair of, of antennae, seven pairs of jointed limbs on their thorax. Okay, their abdomen generally, they don't have uh, many appendages. Um, they have five pairs of branching appendages. Um, oh, sorry, I was wrong. Five pairs of branching appendages on their abdomen used in respiration. Okay, many of these guys are uh, parasitic. So there is this, there are some um, parasitic isopods that latch onto fish and um, will eventually kill them. But again, here are uh, land roly polies, which uh, that's what we call them in the U.S. in in Great Britain, they are called the woodlouse. I think I like that maybe a little better. Anyway, um, second order within Malacostraca are amphipoda, order amphipoda. Amphipods are these tiny little cricket pill bug looking things. Um, they, they are really important um, in the plankton and also as tiny detritivores. Uh, they don't have a car carapace. They look a lot like isopods. Um, they have compound eyes. They have a pair of maxillopeds, which are around their jaws, um, but they are squished this way. So if, if pill bugs and other isopods are squished dorsoventrally, these guys are compressed laterally, okay? And they don't have a, uh, uh, they don't have a larval and metamorphic phases. They, they hatch as tiny little guys and have direct development. Okay. And then Malacostraca euphossiacea. Euphossiacea? Sure. They look like shrimp. They are not true shrimp. Um, they are called, uh, they're the most, one of the most important species in the world that the ocean, the whole ocean is kind of based on these guys. It's called krill. Um, there are 90 different species. Um, they are bioluminescent. So they produce little light flashes in the ocean um, from a organ called the photophore. And um, they are, again, super important in terms of supporting a whole giant ecosystem they are the main source of food for the largest whales in the world including blue whales um and again there's there's yet another video that i will link under this i just want you to know everything is that bad no okay and then malacostraca 
The last order is Decapoda, and these are the super cool ones. So these are uh, the large crustaceans, lobsters, crabs, crayfish, and shrimp. These guys are characterized by having three pairs of maxillopeds. So they got three pairs of appendages just on their face and five pairs of walking legs, five pairs, 10 legs, Decapoda, 10 is Deca. Poda is foot. So these are all of the fun guys um, that are also delicious. And their exoskeleton is a little bit harder. They have heavier plates um, that are calcareous um, in their exoskeleton. So they're a little, a little tougher, um, which is evident by my, my crab claw. I've got a whole crab body coming um, for us to take a look at in class. Okay. And uh, the carapace covers all of their cephalothorax. And again, um, there, there's a couple of different body forms in lobsters and shrimp. They've got that big abdomen, that long abdomen and tail, telson, uropods. But when we get to crabs, their abdomen is folded up, very, very small, folded up underneath their body. Okay. All right, um, these are some decapods that I've met. Oh, can't play media. That's a swimming crab. So cute. Also, can't play that one. Will this one go? Oh, there he goes. So this is a crab that, that was in Carpinteria, little red crab, California red crab, running around. You can see him them walking sideways. Maybe it's not sideways. Maybe to them it's, front, it's forward and their eyes just point in the wrong direction. Yeah. Sorry, I thought those would work. I've already shown you her. Um, I'll try to get those reloaded. Sorry, this is my pet porcelain crab. This is one of my pet hermit crabs. This was a crab, a uh, pelagic crab swimming in the open water. So he has claws and then all of his legs end in paddles. And he paddles around. Super cute. Okay, I think that's it. Go. Any questions? Okay, you already did uh, some reading on crustacea, and the next time we meet, we're going to play with some live crustaceans in class. So uh, for today, your assignment is to do your crustacea prezi. So um, on your prezi, in the arthropod section, you should have made another subsection called crustacea, and the instructions for what to do are on the Canvas assignment. Make sure when you when you do this, you read the assignment on Canvas because there you might not need to find a species for every class and there might be an order that I want you to focus on. So make sure that you're reading the assignments, the instructions and read through the rubric as well. Okay, if you have any questions, reach out to me. Uh, I hope you're well, I hope you're happy. I, I hope you're, you're, I hope you're okay. If you're not happy, I hope you, you are good okay um be good be be kind and um and i'll hopefully see you soon bye